911, state your emergency. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I, go ahead. Hi, I'm Gary Ettinger. I need help. Okay, where are you at? Out in Emory. Ah, uh, what a stupid ass mistake. If I don't make it tell my wife and family I love them. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're breaking up, Gary. Gary? I didn't realize I lived an exceptional life, and then I started to relate the stories of the adventures that I'd gone through. And now, look at this. Gary Edinger chewing up the trail almost a minute better than Bellin. I, I had just been real busy just living my life, living it on my terms. And I just like to chip the ball where they were, but actually I didn't know where I was time-wise. <laughs> After over... I knew a lot of the things I did were not normal. Racing sled dogs, fishing on the Yukon, hunting and trapping. I was attracted to all those things and I wanted to do them and I just went and did them. My family has lived here for 115 years. This is a tough area to make a living. Normal loggers don't go to work if it's 10 below or colder. I mean, only fools go to work when it's that cold. I work alone all by myself. It was that Saturday I was supposed to call a square dance. All join hands in a circle to the left, circle to the left, all the way around, all the way around, and all the way back. It was probably about nine o'clock in the morning. I had already made one trip out of the woods and I went back. There's two trees that grew out of one stump. I made a mistake. I misjudged how much tension there was down there at the bottom. My right leg made it through the gap. My left leg was just clearing that stump when boom, that's all, no pain, just boom. And that's when I knew I was going to die. Nine one one, state your emergency. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? I go ahead. Hi, I'm Gary Edinger. I cut my leg off. I need help. Okay, where are you at? Out in Emory. I'm I'm trying to drive out now. You're you're driving right now. Real slow. My leg is completely cut off. Where's your leg at? It's in my goddamn boot. 
Oh. Are you bleeding real bad? Yeah, I'm going to pass out. Well, stop driving. Pull over to the side of the road. I ain't pulling over. I'm getting out of here. Okay, just one second. I don't have a second. Hello, this is Ryan. Oh, God, it hurts. You cut your leg with the saw? No. A tree severed it right off. I mean, it's right off. I couldn't get a tourniquet on and my belt broke. I'm going to bleed to death. They don't hurry. I can't get here fast enough, man. I I know, Gary. I know what you're saying. We'll get out there as fast as we possibly can, okay? What a stupid ass mistake. Oh, God. If I don't make it, call my wife and family. I love them. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you all right, Gary? Are you with me? Gary? You know, there was things he said to me. It was pretty clear he didn't know if he was going to live. But, and I had no idea. You know, the, the thought that maybe I was the last person he would ever see. You know, it's, you'd rather see your family. They opened the ambulance doors and I was faced with Gary with no leg. That's the first thing I saw. And um, so... I've had 40 years of medical experience and there was a lot of blood in the bottom of that pickup. We're out in the middle of nowhere with this man. No one's gonna hear you scream out there. It was scary to see him like that, because, you know, when I was growing up, he had always been strong, and like, he's my dad. And then all it took was a day for everything to kind of turn upside down. It could have been a lot worse, you know. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse. Could have lost him that day. I, I saw these people talking about me at my funeral, saying, but he never quit. He just didn't lay there and die. The idea was to use my belt for a tourniquet. And I gave it a hell of a reef, and I busted the belt right in half. Holy cow. Well, I had to stop my life from leaking out of the bottom of my leg. So that's what I did. And I crawled to the skidder. I had to grab my boot with my foot in it so I could raise myself up into the cab. I think I started to pass out because I remember the trees weren't standing straight up and down anymore. They were kind of fuzzy. Over the course of the next four or five months, he had seven surgeries. And there were times when he said he wished he hadn't survived, that he just laid back and, and let it end there in the snow. But um, he's here. He went back to work exactly 10 months from the day of the accident. The first thing I had to do was grab that tree and drag it back out of the woods. I wasn't gonna let that tree beat me. To not go back would have been like I was some kind of coward. I couldn't face that. And 
then I go down to that tree and drug it out. You know, I, I beat that tree. I beat that sucker. When you're tired at the end of the day, it's a good feeling. In a job like this, you could turn around and look at the pile and see what you accomplished. To bust out singing and bust out swearing any day and time you want to. I mean, that's a real freedom. Son of a bitch. I felt it brush my arm as it come down right there. Boom! Every, every logger you talk to is like that. They got story after story. Knock my hard hat off. You know how much distance there is between your face and the bill of this hard hat? Boom! Boom! I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't imagine that the tree would do this. Shot backwards and going, boom! <laughs> <laughs> but I was hiding behind the tree over here. That was a freak accident too. I mean, you would never think that would have happened, but it's just perfect storm. Oh, I'm sure there are close calls all the time. All the time. But I don't tell her. <laughs> when I do make a mistake, it doesn't become a mistake, it becomes an adventure. <laughs> you know, I turned it, somehow I turned it into this grand adventure. That's just how my mind works. Shit happens, that's why I lost my leg. Shit happens. The more, the more life you live, the more likely shit's going to happen. <laughs> if you sit on that couch over there, uh, nothing will happen. I've done a lot, but I'm not ready to call it quit. It just feels like I've got a lot of living to do yet. Stories that I get to tell yet. You know, I happen to pick one of the hardest places to hunt in North America. Because it's so rugged and so steep. I think he needs wild places. It's probably the equivalent of his religion. I don't know any place else where you could discover yourself. I mean, who you really are. I've spent my entire life seeing how far I could get. I already know that I have lived. For me, the final question will be, will I have lived enough? I was born on a farm south of Cannon Way, where I picked some rock and I baled some hay. I trapped me a girl and she married me, but the Wisconsin timber kept calling me. Listen, boys, listen what I say. If you don't cut timber on a windy day, stay out of the woods when it's 40 below, or you ain't gonna make it to collect your dough. 
When I was 55, I didn't heed my advice. It was colder than hell, and I paid the price. A tree I was falling came after me, and I lost my leg just below the knee. Listen, boys, listen what I say. You don't cut timber on a windy day. Stay out of the woods when it's 40 below, or you ain't gonna make it to collect your dough. Well, I'm doing fine, as you can see. I'm back in the woods and I'm cutting them trees. A logger is hard, iron to their core, and they don't make them like that anymore. Listen, boys, listen what I say. You don't cut timber on a windy day. Stay out of the woods when it's 40 below, or you ain't gonna make it to be getting old.